They can probably. <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome to the Rockler Plywood Challenge wrap-up video. We are going to be highlighting all of our favorite projects. I don't know, maybe top 25, top 30. I think Ish. 40. Uh, We're going 40, maybe top 40, like, like music. Like, we got the billboard charts of woodworking yeah. videos. Mike, did you realize you're wearing headphones right now? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were podcasting for a minute. <laughs> So the reason that we chose four is because we had a ton of awesome submissions yeah. and some not so awesome ones. No, just joking. But um, yeah, obviously we could not go over every single one of them because this podcast would end up being like five hours long or we would only talk about each one for three seconds. And But we want to make sure that we're able to highlight all of the unique project entries that either had some kind of crazy left turn, a really unique uh, way of working with the material, or just anything that was creative or outside of the box. Yep. Yeah, and there's, if you want to see more of the projects in depth, we'll do a Pinterest board that has all of the projects. And there's also a playlist where we got all the video or all the projects that had YouTube videos and we compiled them. So if you want to sit back and watch, what is it, probably like four hours? Yeah, there's cool. about a hundred YouTube entries. Yeah. yeah. And of course you can always just go to Instagram and we'll have links below to everything we're going to talk about here. And you can just follow the, the hashtag Rockler Plywood Challenge and you'll see everything that was submitted. Y'all ready? I'm yep. ready. Let's get it started. And let's hop into it. So the first one comes in from Alex G. Floor. Wow. Look at this. What a project. That's a <laughs> hell of a projector, right? No, this one's awesome. So we're starting right off the bat with no right angles, which I think is an interesting place to like get going, right? Yeah, I think nothing is right about this project. <laughs> it's, all, it's all wrong. This podcast is going to be full of puns, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many. Too yeah, many puns. The thing that I always wondered with this one, did... I didn't see a video for it, but it almost seems like some like the the seat pieces, the curves in the seat pieces could have been pulled out of the curves in the sort of arms and support pieces. So you're saying like having it more shapely and organic, right? Like I wonder if the radius there is the oh, same yeah, yeah, as the yeah, radius like around the seat. Right, right. Like they were nested together, kind of. Right, and, and when you're they're sort of cutting out of the thing. Yeah, they're like batch it. That's using one point. cut to get two pieces, right? Right. So when I when I first saw this project, I assumed CNC, but after watching a lot of the videos, I saw a lot of the projects that looked like they were done with a CNC. They were actually done with either a bandsaw or, in many cases, a lot of jigsaw. A lot more use of the jigsaw for these projects yeah. than uh, I was sort of expecting. But that actually totally makes sense given plywood. Yeah, and I think the interesting challenge with this project is you have the leg piece and then you have the orientation of the grain flipped so that you can have the curve of the back. So that was an interesting way of joining everything together. I'm curious if you use dowel screws or uh, anything like that. I'd love to see some close-ups on that. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic project. It's well staged, love the concrete floors, white background, yeah, it really makes saying. the lines pop. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to see like what was the sort of uh, origin for the design. I mean, I think I've seen some chairs that are that are framed somewhat similarly, yeah. but I wonder if there's sort of uh, sort of a departure point of of an existing piece of furniture, or whether that was all from scratch. Yeah, I've definitely seen chairs that are kind of this style. This one looks a little bit more swoopy than the ones I've seen, like in the front. That's like a larger radius. I remember one time I actually designed something not exactly like this, but kind of like that, and I was showing it to my wife, and she said like, "It looks like a walker." <laughs> I see it now that you say it, but <laughs> my mind was not there. Initially. Yeah, I was sort of thinking like a children's high chair. Like a children's high chair version of this would be pretty pretty nice. Yeah, you, you just, just flip the way they sit and then they've got the, then you just put a tray in front of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be pretty sweet. Awesome. Let's roll right. on to the next one. Great project. Alex G. Floor. Good job. Uh, we got noodles. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is a oh, project. Josh makes. I remember Josh. Josh makes is awesome. I've seen him do a lot of cool stuff. Awesome. Well, I thought this was one that I threw in the mix because I thought it was an awesome example of, I, th I think we've seen an incredible amount of functional things yeah. through this project, whether it's a furniture piece, a paddle board, or whatever it is. But this one is kind of strictly for the art of it, and I thought that was really neat. Uh, the way it's painted is really cool. I love the fact that he's able to show the dimension where it looks like you've got overlapping plywood, right. even though everything is just kind of one solid plane all the way across. Yeah, I think this is definitely like the most acid trippy of any, <laughs> any of the entrants that we had this year. Um, yeah, it's almost like, dude, you'll never believe what I dreamed last night. I was eating this green spaghetti and there was this pig there. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be interesting if they sort of did a LED, like an LED string light around the back of it and then offset it from a wall. So you could almost, it could almost be like the plywood version of like a neon light thing. So yeah. 
if it was off the wall by like an inch and a half, but there was, you know, uh, LED lights running along that thing, it would sort of backlight the, the wall really nicely. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Also, very good staging as well. Clean white background with a couple things of, <clears throat> with Just a couple scale. little pops of color. Yeah, really yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, Josh Makes. Good job. Okay, so this, she never disappoints, right? Minimalist <laughs> maker. <laughs> Everything I've ever seen her do has been awesome. She was awesome in our last challenge that we had, and again, again, equally awesome. I remember seeing this come together when she was starting to share some pictures, and I was like, I think it's a bench, but I wasn't quite sure. But yeah, it's definitely a bench now. But I, I think the big takeaway on this one is, one, just the efficient use of making one repeated shape. Yeah, yeah so I think there's of, two different elements in the whole thing. There's the triangles and then the little, like, the parts that bridge them together. Exactly. So the actual amount of different cuts is so small. And then the spacers she came up with was really smart. So mm -hmm. everything is a flat plane on these on each of these triangles. But she just put a little bit of a of an angle on the spacer, which set everything up to be kind of that yeah. perfect little rounded shape. I watched the video. I think what she did was she set her miter saw to like two and a half and she just cut it once, flipped it, cut it, flipped it, cut it so that everything was five degrees in between. Yeah. And I think she even commented that it came together like way faster than what she was expecting it was going to take her to make it. it. It's a fantastic project. The one thing I would like to see is some photos of people sitting on it. Um, I think it's going to topple over? If, no, no, no. no, no. I, I, the, the geometry totally makes sense that it would, it would stay up. Right. But I think it's like one of those things where it's so kind of mysterious and, and oh, sculptural by itself that throwing in a couple images for the for Tells the people what it is. Right. And also, like, I think it, it emphasizes how dramatic the form is when you see it actually in use, that it, that see right. it in its sort of function. Uh, I also think the same concept could be taken a lot far, farther with, like, how you sort of maybe sculpt out or how you do with that top profile to maybe get some sort of curves or stuff like, like that into it. But yeah, it's one of my favorite projects. You know what this bench would be perfect for? What we're doing right now. Look oh man, yeah. Look at this shape. Can't Mini, go ahead and send it over. Yeah. I'll give you my address. I'm sure the shipping from like, I don't I think she's in like Sweden somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure the shipping is great. Wormhole it to me. Yeah. Okay. This one, I added in here, and when I first saw this one, I wasn't. Quite I had really. I'm. I'm just. I'm gonna cut you off and just say I had really low expectations for this project. Whenever I saw the progress shots, uh -huh. this thing came out awesome. It did. I thought. I know. Like it looks. <laughs> it's kind of confusing looking when you see it, but yeah, I mean, it's pieces of plywood. He put that bow tie in there that he made out of metal, I think, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, and then painted. He just kind of like sanded a live edge onto the ends and painted it black so it looks like a huge slab of wood basically and i was really impressed with the way this thing came out yeah i was trying to think the, the sort of how to sum up my thoughts on this and it's sort of like you created like a physical rendering of a project right <laughs> right <laughs> like it, like remember how like in the old star wars movies they didn't cgi they built like yeah, scale models. practical yeah. effects. This is almost like if you built like a one-to-one -one scale model of a live edge piece of furniture. Right. This yeah. is like how you would do it. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty clever. Yeah, I remember when he, because he's, he layered up, I think, two layers of three-quarter inch plywood for this. And mm -hmm. I think the plywood itself was a particle board uh, sheet rather than... Oh, like an MDF core? Exactly. I think it was an MDF core, which whenever I saw him, the two pieces laminated together at, in a progress photo, I looked at it and I was oh, like, no. oh, <laughs> like, I'm never going to like talk bad about a project, uh, you know, but in my head, I, I was just sitting there, I was like, man, I, I hope this comes together. And once he put the stain on the done. edges, man, he, he crushed it. So great work, Black Timber Company. Yep. Very clever. Okay, I love, this one, go ahead. Yeah, so this one this one seems to me like it's like ready to be on sale at like a museum store. Yeah. Like it's it's incredibly polished. It has both sort of a futuristic and also a completely sort of organic look. When you hang it in a tree like that, you ma I imagine some sort of like tropical breadfruit tree with some sort of giant fruit or beehive hanging from it. Yep. Um, and I just, I just picture some like little brightly colored birds just popping right out and then like flying away. As soon as you said futuristic, I totally see that. Like I didn't think about that before, but yeah, I could totally see this in like some weird futuristic movie or something. Like <laughs> everybody gets pods. their food from the trees. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's a project that could be made by hand. It could be made with a CNC. It's like a nice, it's a nice scale of a project. It's not too big. You could knock this out in a weekend pretty easily. But at yeah. the same time, it's so visually distinct. You, it wouldn't just blend in. It'd be something that people actually sort of notice. 
So I think that as like a, as like a DIY project involving plywood, if someone was asking me like, you know, which one, I got a free weekend, I want to make something cool. Yep. This is the type of project I would recommend. It has a high probability of success, but at the same time, it doesn't look like something you could just go out and buy either. So there's all that reward for taking the time to make something unique. Yeah. yeah, and great intuition photographing it the way you did. Uh, I like highlighting when people are photographing well because you know that's right. the whole goal is like getting people you know need doing a bird better. Need, need a bird, or right? If you send us one, we'll put a chipmunk in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say that if Winnie the Pooh were judging this, this would definitely win. One hundred percent. Number one. <laughs> Only if there's honey in it. <laughs> All right, this is, the, okay. this is the chair from Sam Lee. Whenever we did our live YouTube watch party <clears throat> last night, um, which there's a link to down in the description, this was one that we were really impressed with. So he did curve cuts all the way around to make, to make Two, these curves. In multiple directions. Yeah, and um, one, just from a technical standpoint, I think this is, a real, this is a real standout from just like, it was built incredibly <clears throat> well. It used some relatively complicated techniques in a just very efficient, and very fluid way. Like it, nothing about it seemed like he was struggling with the process at all. Yeah, it's a design that I feel like I've seen similar things, but I'm not sure if they're exactly like this. And it's cool that like, you know, you could actually use it for like storage and, you know, throw some books under there or something. You know what it reminds me of? I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Eames. It's like an elephant. Yeah. 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 Yep. It reminded me a lot of that el that molded plywood elephant. I, ha I have seen designs like this, but they weren't curve cut bends. They were all pressed lamination bends yeah. like the Eames elef elephant. Right. So I, but... So I think there's some visual similarities to that, but I would say it's original in terms of how it's made because right. if they're factory producing those kind of things, like the chair that Mike's sitting on, yeah. curve cutting doesn't make as much sense. They're just going to press it out all the pieces. Right. But that kind of making of building sort of the dies and the form work yeah. for that doesn't make sense for sort of one-off DIY projects. So that's yeah, why I think it's such a strong, strong thing is it looks familiar like one of these you know, professionally made plywood chairs, but he's bringing an alternative technique that's way more appropriate to DIYers. I think it's uh, an incredibly strong project. It's executed well on every level. And I think it's one of the, the most successful curve bending projects we saw. I yeah. think so. Totally. And Mike, that's a great picture. Almost looks like a render. It's so good. It does, man. <laughs> You're right. And great tip with how he put the tape on before he did the glue up for the curve cut so he could yeah. peel off the tape and remove a lot of the glue with it. Uh, yeah. That squeezes out of all the curves. Yeah. Exactly. Did you have that problem? I didn't because okay. I didn't glue up my curves. Uh, but oh, that's right, because they just kind of sit in there and the metal holds. Them exactly, sure. so, but yeah, um, that's definitely a tip that I'll be like, that's that's going in the back pocket for sure. Awesome job from Sam Chi. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. This would be the most fun to have, I think, of any of the projects. I think so. So we were talking about big wheels, and this one looks like it would be so fun because, one, we're just talking about riding big wheels on gravel and kind of how it's like, there's no suspension, so it's a little bumpy, but I feel like you could really Tokyo drift this thing oh, with yeah. the PVC back wheels. Yeah, you'd be sliding all over the Tokyo drift. <laughs> yeah, we actually saw a plywood bicycle as well, Yeah, um, yeah. and I think they're both great reminders of just how strong laminated plywood is for making frames and structural members of things. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's something I think people think so often of plywood in the planar direction, but if you use it as sort of vertical structural members with a few layers lam laminated, you can do incredibly uh, uh, efficient structural stuff. Also yeah. like the detail in the wheel too. Yeah, so there was like a little bit of hand carving, like power carving with the angle grinder, some CNC carving. So it was a good blend of uh, traditional tools and using CNC to get a perfectly round wheel and stuff like that. So yeah, he, right. he carved out the seat too. Yeah, and there's the picture of him with his daughter next to him on her tiny big wheel next yeah. to him. And that's really funny. So shout awesome. out Ox in the Shop. Good job, Ryan. Nice stuff. Next, this guitar is- It's pretty decent. It's decent. It's pretty decent. It's insane. It is. A lot went into it. Yeah. yeah. And the more you look at it, the more things you pick up on. Like the the pickups here. He made a, them. He made the pickups, yeah. yes. But each of those, like that's set on a little piece of tape measure. Uh -huh, yeah. Like, And then the, the bridge is an old vintage hinge and all this kind of stuff. So this one is chock full of those small details that you could just kind of like pick up something new each time you look at it. Yeah, there's a lot of stories there that he, if, if, I mean, in the video, he goes over a lot of it. But yeah, yeah. somebody came over your house and was like, oh, that's a cool guitar. Tell me about it. It's like, 
How about an hour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sit down. I, I love Keith's work that kind of has that collage feel to it. Like he's layering all these different patinas and found objects and textures all together. It's almost like he's he's doing some sort of like a, yeah, like collage sort of artwork or painting where he's just trying to create this overall textural effect through a whole bunch of found things. But he's doing it through found things and techniques of sort of patina and texturing and carving out the wood into those little pyramids and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. You know, I think there's also a lesson to be learned that, and not saying that he couldn't, but like if you're ever in a situation where you can't do something that's going to be pristine mm. and so you don't want to make it like, oh, it's like it came out close, but there's all these flaws, like get dirty with it. Yeah. Because yeah. this thing came out awesome looking and it's it, obviously very dirty looking. It reminds me of, I think it's like the third Pirates of the Caribbean, the one it's where... The best one? Yeah, the one... <laughs> they Just get, like Tokyo, they keep Tokyo getting worse. Yeah, they of the keep Caribbean. getting worse. Where it, it reminds me of like a pirate ship guitar. It's very See cool. Seen some battles. Yeah, exactly. So I think we have our first lighting project so far, and this one's from masterofnone.tv on Instagram. And I think it's a really cool use of just repeated shapes again. So yeah. once again, he's got you know a ton of squares to make this spiraled uh, neck for the lamp. But aside mm -hmm. from that. Uh, the the shade itself looks really cool as well. Also a really good picture, very dramatic looking with the way that the light is casting its shadows. Kind of reminiscent of like the the stands that you made out of plywood for yeah. the grates where except for they're like floating apart instead of all together. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great project. It reminds me of the sort of twisted stack napkins that you'll see like at oh. like a bar. Like when the bartender's born, he'll like twist in the, the napkin stacks all the way up. But again, you can use basic shapes to get really interesting visual effects if you just multiply and do little uh, slight mathematical adjustments to each layer. Right, and it's cool. So I think one of the challenges with lighting if you're using exclusively plywood is the shade. And I think this is a cool way of making it dramatic. It has a really cool shadow that it casts, but it's still kind of effective as a, as a shade as well. So you're never yes. staring directly at the bulb, but yes. you're still getting a cool, cool look. Good Throwing stuff. Most Master of none TV. Another lighting project. Hey. What are the chances? Two in a row. So we reviewed this one when we did the, the watch party. It was really cool. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the, the doghouse I did a little bit, which funny enough, people have approached me and saying, hey, can you make a big chandelier with that? Mm -hmm. the, it, 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 I liked it as the sort of like the little wrecking ball kind of look with the different, uh, you know, some of them are more transparent, letting through more light. Some of them are a little more opaque. Um, I would be curious to see it with like a, a little bit taller with like a really big just sort of cone with maybe the inside contrast painted. I think it could be cool too. Mm. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, for me this one, it's, it's the lampshade part of it or the light part of it that really stands out. Um, I, I have not seen the video for this one actually. I've been going through as many as I can, but I haven't seen this one. So I'll be curious to see how, like the way that the base came together. What came first kind of? The, yeah. the light or the base? I would guess the light. I feel like there's a lot more thought into that part or just like more visual interest. And I guess that makes sense in a way because you don't want them necessarily competing with each other. Yeah. But in a way, I almost wonder if like you even made the base simpler. Right. Could, right. It, could it drive more attention to the light part of it, which is like the star to me. Right. That's Literally. what I was thinking too. It's like the, you're seeing this sort of harsh triangulation of the, the, the lampshade part. Mm -hmm. I almost would like to see more of like an Eiffel Tower triangulation. It's almost like the negative version of that to mm -hmm. build up the tower that sort of holds the base. So, yeah. so you start to see that like the structure is the sort of negative leftover of the, the sort of pieces that are making up the shade. But right. fantastic project. Yeah. yeah. Good and, use of the sheet, though. You know, he's able to get a right. really tall lamp out of, you know, he's using the eight foot length of the plywood right. really well. And he's using it as both structure and as surface. Totally. And this is a good example of juxtaposition in the way that he staged the photo, where it's like a very modern looking thing in like a yeah, rough background a bar yeah. or something yeah but still when you get that close-up of the bolts on the shade i think it helps tie everything together because it does have that clean modern element with just like a little bit of industrial kind yeah, of design to it as well thing. so maybe that's something else to say is definitely go look at all these instagram pictures because most people put up a collage where you're going to get to see those detail shots and we try to use kind of a further away shot so you can see all of the project in these pictures so yeah sometimes the far shot doesn't do justice to all the detail that goes into a piece this one, I love this one. I yeah. love this guy's video. I it was so good, right? Yes, this guy's a, <laughs> an awesome edit, editor. Like he's, he does one of the best jobs of editing that I've seen anybody on YouTube, woodworking or otherwise. Yeah. <clears throat> I also think that 
he was incredibly restrained in the way that he went about this project. Like, you know, you look at it from right here, it just looks very simple. You're like, what? It's a box. There's not a lot to it. But then if you see the way that he did all the texturing on the doors, yeah. the little extra touch with the leather handles. He made the legs. He made the legs. Yeah. It, I think this project is great. I, I love this project. Yeah. Right. This isn't the photo I would have chosen for this one because the texture, I think, is like the, to me, like the, the, the most intriguing detail. Like the sort of detail of the corner edge where you see right. the, ed the edge grain <clears throat> and then like the sort of textured paneling. Yeah. Um, Texture, I think, it's is something bad. is un just totally underutilized in a lot of woodworking. Yeah. Everyone tries to get everything as smooth and as either, and like the variance is like, did you go matte or glossy, yeah. right? There's a whole lot of stuff in between. If you talk to any, any sort of interior designer, n never once are they gonna say, oh yeah, I want everything in the room to be the same texture. Yeah. Yeah. Having vari variability uh, of sort of different textural palettes in your back pocket, I think is an incredibly strong uh, design position to have and I really appreciate sort of seeing how we sort of textured and split this plywood. Very nice. Yeah, I think that's actually just hearing you saying that that's something that I probably need to do more of because I mean this shows that a, a very rough texture can still have like a clean minimalist modern right. Something look. Something right. can be not flat but still smooth, right? You can, yeah. you can have an uneven or a textured surface <clears throat> that still won't give you splinters and it's still sealed and, and Right, exactly. and as long as you're, as long as that texture is within this really nice, clean, traditional case, right. it all plays together really nicely. Yep. Great work. Go watch this video. It's awesome. Uh, all right. <laughs> is this the most okay. unexpected? So, <laughs> this project I thought was cool when I first saw it on Instagram, but I was way more impressed when I saw the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he just kind of sketched this out he like he freehand sketched it and then freehand cut all the the sections with his jigsaw yeah like just sort of scribbled on the plywood a little sharks, bit man. not even really sometimes you just sort of cut it without even drawing it yeah so it, it was awesome to see the video because you you realize for for modern ideation he's just doodling three-dimensionally in plywood right it was a good way of <clears throat> illustrating the fact that like his thought process isn't this like, okay, I know I want it to be three feet long, so let me get it into the computer model. He's, he, can, he, he does a really great job of transferring a two-dimensional idea into three dimensions. with uh, and, he, and he did a great job showing it in the video too, showing how he's able to build up layers and using the past layer as a reference for the next one. Yeah, so on. nothing becomes too and complex. This ever. isn't like a, a uniform symmetrical shark. Right. Like there's yeah, movement like a wave in, in the tail. So to yeah. be able to sort of just sort of freehand that into that. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I like watching Jimmy DeResta so much is because you can see him just sort of thinking through the material. Yeah. Uh, and that's definitely what we sort of saw here is he was just sort of feeling it and, and making it happen, making little adjustments along the way. And it's an, it's an awesome shark. Yeah, yeah. it kind of makes me think of like the way that somebody who was a clay sculptor and that's all they ever knew. And you said, okay, make something out of wood. They'd be like, okay, well, I got to add up material and then I'll subtract and then material. take it away. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, but That's yeah. awesome. So I hadn't seen uh, Modern Ideations videos prior to this, but I'm definitely going to be doing the deep dive, and I'm excited to see what you come up with next. Deep diving with sharks. Yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> okay. So this is one I really liked, and one, I think it's like, I'm, bookshelves are always so sort of boring. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, so one, I think this is such like a clever use of plywood, this particularly adapted to the thing it's trying to store. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like that sort of the comparing the edge grain to the pages of a book and then using that sort of, uh, the sheets of plywood sort of vary to make them perfectly fit the books in. So you almost get this like little bedside table that's flat yeah. mm -hmm. with the top of the books being part of the top of the table. There's also a really cool little pop-out thing where you can charge your phone and stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, as so, long as you're into those specific books and never changing them, it's great. No, <laughs> books are pretty standard size. You can find them in three yeah, places. Just like, but, oh, uh, do you have anything in 800 pages? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I also like that this is just like, I, I could see this being like the sideboard or the, the bedside table, like an Ace Hotel or something like that. It's got exactly. that kind of cool. It could be made out of, this could literally be made out of the cheapest sheathing plywood. Like... Actually, the concept is what's valuable, not so much the material. That you're right. Using. This is one that actually looks better with thicker veneer plywood rather than with like a Baltic birch. With a Baltic birch, it would look too repetitive. Mm -hmm. With this one, it like is perfect for the books that have different colors on the pages and stuff like that. So I thought this was like a great DIY project. Again, somebody can knock out in the weekend. Yep.
Good stuff. Okay. This one is... This one kind of falls in the same class as like the J makes one for me. Right. Where he made a really functional piece and again, using the plywood to create some kind of texture. The way he did it was with the weave in the front. I thought this was another really great project. Um, I, I think a lot of the things that appealed to me with the project were the, the, the ones that elevated the material. So they made plywood instead of, you know, which is normally like a compromise when people think about, oh, it's not hardwood. Yeah. But this actually like takes the plywood and makes it the focal point. Yeah, like it's, it, it's elevated the project because it's made out of plywood the way that he did that front. Yeah, I really love the fact that he went with the visible layers on the box. That way it ties the weave into the rest of the, the cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, I think if there was like edge banding on that, I think a lot of that would have been lost or the impact would have been a little bit less. But whenever you see the wide shot of this, it's just a beautifully kind of uh, proportioned case mm -hmm. on its own. But then the weave on the door is just kind of the icing on the cake. And it's, it's a really unique thing. Yep. Yeah, it, it, he uses sort of like almost, he uses the, the flat part of the veneer as almost sort of like a negative space to highlight the times where he uses like the edge grain. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's sort of like edge grain in the middle, nice little clean border to create some distance, and then edge grained again. So it's not too overwhelming like the way it would be if it was just all edge grain for the perimeter of the cabinet and then edge grain sort of woven for the face of it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic project. And what I like about this one is that it, is inventive he but it's inventive in a way that's really materially efficient yeah because he's cutting that thin enough to weave he's not actually using that much for it mm -hmm. and he's still using plywood as plywood which is the most material efficient way to use it using right. it as like single you know single ply layers to create surface so i think it's awesome that he can do both the functional meat and potatoes part of plywood, but then weave in just a little bit of detail to totally separate the project from others. I have to imagine he might win the award for like sawdust made on this one though, <laughs> cutting all of those tiny strips. I think there's a lot of, a lot yeah. of people contending for that one. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> We're all shooting for it. Yeah, great project. This Up one, next, yeah. we have more strips. <laughs> so this is, this was the one, that, one of the ones that really caught my eye. One, because I'm planning to do my own sort of stand-up paddle board. But I think there's a lot of things that we've seen, like the shark, where they're in, like you see the form and you know you know that that comes from one sheet of plywood, and you're like, oh, that's amazing. This one I think is impressive on a few levels. One, the form isn't what you the curvilinear form of a paddleboard isn't what you'd expect from plywood. Right. Uh, also, stand-up paddleboards are pretty big, so to get all of that between the frame, everything, and all that, yeah. And then and then using the edge grain to sort of create this really interesting look to it is, I think this one's just fantastic all the way around. So Yeah, and good good use of the art, the artistic liberty or freedom of the challenge to throw in a couple, that looks like walnut stripes in there to kind of give it a little bit more, you know, visual impact. Mm -hmm. Great way to play with the loose rules of the challenge. Yeah, I, I would love to see, uh, I mean, I don't know if he made a video or not for this one. I haven't seen it yet. I don't think so. I don't um, think he did. But I would love to see like a little more uh, of, you know, is it foam filled? Is it just hollow? Um, you know, the it, it's a pretty pretty outstanding project. I'd also like to see some photos of it just in against like a white room, so you can really sort of get a sense of the uh, of the shape and and the side profile, what that sort of looks yeah. like. Yeah, really great photo though. I remember when he was when I first started seeing him take progress pictures, and it was just like the hoops that he had. I think he CNC them yeah. out. And I was just like, what's he building? And then I thought, at one point I thought he was building a boat. And I was yeah. like, how is he going to build a whole boat? And then, yeah, it turned out to be a paddleboard, which this had to be pretty time consuming. And he actually did a second project. He made right. chairs like right in the beginning yeah, the of it, which were, awesome were also really, yeah, really good projects. So he went above and beyond as a... Uh, yeah, it's an incredible project. Yeah, yes. great job. PC makes. Next, oh, we boy. got our boy, <laughs> Friend Mike of the Clifford. Show. Yeah, friend, friend of the show, Mike Clifford from Industrial Maker, taking, uh, doing a take on, I think, a topic we've talked plenty about. Yeah. Shitty river tables. <laughs> How can we change it up? And there's a way to pixelate do it. it. We can pixelate it. And somebody that's like the 8-bit nerd over here. I feel like you would like that, right? More of a 16. No, this oh, okay. yeah, this yeah. actually reminds me of more like Legos from like the, the 80s, where they were doing a lot of white. Oh, the yeah. space Legos were all like white and blue. Nice. Okay. okay. Um, so it definitely has that sort of aesthetic. It reminds me of like there's this, there's this, the most coveted Lego set when I was a kid was this like space monorail system. That was like the biggest set. 
Okay. Um, and just kind of has the same aesthetic. It's like white with sort of blue translucent stuff and mm -hmm. obviously pixelated. Mike is really good at coming up with new ideas and new ways to do things. Like that's one of the yeah. things that I see him doing a lot. And this one's great to see that the design looks really good too. Like I think sometimes people have a tendency to like, oh, here's a technique and then forget about the design part of it. Just yeah. to like, I just want to see if I can make a river table that looks pixelated instead of organic, but actually using that in a, in a nice way with the waterfall. And it's like, you know, not too overdone. He doesn't have like a million different colors in there. And it's or a nice angle like too. It's not quite right. It's not quite yeah. like 30. It's Might like be somewhere a 15. in between. I love those 15. Yeah, you do. But a great video too, kind of, and like what you were talking about with the design process, he did a good job of showing the different SketchUp iterations, and which the, led to this one. And the then, failures that he had. That's what I was about to say. And then like him overcoming epoxy mishaps yeah i did i that there was, was one part where it was like a hard cut to he's like now right now you'd think i'd be standing in front of a finished thing but he's like i had to rebuild the whole thing yeah the little spit take during that part okay here we go now this guy i don't know what he's thinking <laughs> another friend of the show yeah so he built is a good way of like flipping the challenge on his yeah. head of instead of building something out of plywood he built one sheet of plywood out, out of, of recycled else. skateboard so i love that that's incredibly unique and creative uh so shout out to ben from Wellby design on this one and ironically maybe one of the most challenging projects of all things <laughs> it might be the most the time consuming of, to just make a sheet of plywood that has nothing done to it just to reverse it all yes yeah, so this is a cool example of what i love about this project because we've had so many people that are build or building stuff and filming their first like real proper youtube videos on it i know he had one or two kind of quick little blip kind of tutorial yeah. videos but this is the first time he did like, like a, project. a real project with kind of like production effort into it and i think he did an amazing job of he one did. kind of introducing himself and the techniques that he kind of uses to get you know from raw broken skateboard to usable product mm -hmm. Um, so it was a great intro to his channel and a great way to kind of like kick it off so that as he goes forward People can kind of like understand his process without going into it too deeply But yeah. he didn't cover it so deeply that now he could actually go back and do those in-depth videos of like how to glue up a skateboard blank Because he didn't go too deep into into it on this video. But. Yeah, and excellent editing again I mean, I think he did like a 12-minute video which yeah. you could see a 12-minute video of this kind being really boring but the way that he edited it Showing like a his bunch personality of, bunch of kind of vignettes. Yeah, the lots way of he was able to change up music and kind of mm -hmm. artistic style. So it actually it. kept it really interesting to watch the whole way through. So very it, promising. My, my one thing would be the way you sort of photographed the end piece, right? So mm. uh, if you're highlighting the color or something, never shoot it on colored carpet. Like get a it's white a green carpet. Oh, that's a get good point. Get a white drop cloth or really great tip. If you want sort of an inexpensive thing that you can lay down quickly yep. just to create a clean background, get a couple sheets of drywall. Yeah. They're, I think it's about like 12 bucks. You can get two sheets bundled together. Yeah, melamine's really nice for And that it has too. a nice uh, sort of, it's not quite pure white, but it's just, just a little bit of soft. a grayish uh, soft white. And you could just throw that down on the ground and then lean it up against the white wall to get the photograph. Right. The other thing that I thought would be, it's hard to, it's hard to, represent a whole sheet of plywood and show how amazing the grain is, right? Yeah. Right. So he's sort of stuck with sort of presenting the sheet of plywood as, you show it as a single object, a sheet of plywood, but then you lose all that color. It starts to look like just like a painted on pattern or texture. Right. I think another interesting way to sort of document that would be putting the sheet horizontal on a table. One, you can really control the light on the surface and take the camera and photograph it almost eye level looking down. Yeah, so you can so see you how can long see it is. in the right? foreground, you can see the real dramatic grain yep. and you'll sort of see the whole object in perspective going away. It'll make it seem like big and dramatic and you might even be able to get some of that end grain in the, the shot as well. Totally. Yep. So for all you guys out there building sheets of plywood for videos, <laughs> Ben knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, and he ended up building a clothing rack out of this sheet of plywood as well. So make sure to go check out his channel, give it a sub and... Uh, good job, Ben. Good job, Ben. Good job, Ben. Next, okay, oh boy. this one is a very, very strong contender. I feel like yes. I'm gonna be arguing for the sake of this project later on in the video. Um, I think it's just a great use of one, uh, highlighting the material and kind yeah. of the, the textures and visual kind of aesthetic that you can get out of plywood like a lot of people expect. But he did it in a silhouette that's just beautiful regardless of what it's built out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, kind of what you just said, but there's a few projects that we got that used similar techniques to this where it kind of just 
making a pattern out of all the plies to build something. This one, I think, embodied that the best of any of them. How, again, the plywood, it's like at a selling point, the fact that you have this plywood coffee table now. It looks awesome to see all that end grain or side plies in there. Um, and also seeing the way that like the bull nose created that kind of like spiral. At first I thought he like did something weird to it. And yeah. then when I saw the video, I was like, oh, it's That's just because it's curved. It, it just naturally does that. But yeah, that, this is an awesome yeah, project. Mixing the, the choice of sort of the, the radius on the edge conditions of all the pieces uh, versus the sort of perpendicular nature of the grain is really, really smart. And it, it gives the end grain another life. Yeah. So what we what we see a lot is we'll see end grain used really well in one view and one plane and then sort of framed with something else, right? Mm -hmm. And what I thought when I first saw him working on this project, he was sort of doing process stuff. I assumed he was going to you know just sort of cut shapes out of out of legs similar to like you did for your table, right? Um, but the minute I saw that he was like doing glue ups for the leg, I was like, okay, this yeah. guy's this guy's going all the way. He's completely committing to this table being a complete expression of end grain. Yeah. Right. Also, really good job in being reserved in the design of it. Yeah. Because it's Doesn't such a right. yeah, it's, it's such a bold pattern on it already that keeping it simple like this was like the perfect choice. Yeah. And it's not one crazy tabletop with uh, you know, really simple legs, like painted black legs or some kind of hairpin legs. Like mm -hmm. what you were saying is like the the emphasis wasn't just on the tabletop. It spills all the way through the entire piece. And he's LA-based, so he might be able to see it in per person. Yeah, we need to check that out. We're awesome. Over. Great work. So, Johnny Builds. From okay. my hometown. Yeah. Oklahoma City. Maybe we'll go see it. Maybe. When we're in Oklahoma next When you're in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. When, yeah, I'm let gonna me know go. when you're passing through. Yeah, and again, Johnny, in fact, I think he's probably going to be in here later because he did two projects That's that were right. both pretty stellar. This was... I just remember, didn't this come out like the first day of the challenge or like close to it? So he really got the ball rolling, set the bar high. If it weren't for this project, who knows? The whole thing might have been different. Like maybe he made people up their games right from the beginning before they were starting to plan yeah, stuff out. Yeah, shout out to the early posters. I think so. That was part of us kind of teasing it a couple weeks ahead, ahead as he's yeah. like hedging his bets. He did the he's math. like, you know what? I'm 99% sure this is a plywood project. Screw it, I'm just going for it. Imagine it was like a bent lamination project instead yeah. though. <laughs> Either way, you got a solid project. That this is a, this is an awesome chair build, you know, challenge or not. Um, I think chairs are one of those intimidating projects to a lot of people. He did a great job of keeping relatively simple joints. Really the only angles are kind of with with the back and that's all kind of one big assembly. So mm -hmm. great way of taking the intimidation factor down uh, for the sake of the instructional video and great kind of project all around yeah. yeah i'm trying to remember now it's been like since the first week when the project or when the challenge kicked off that i saw the video but weren't the seats all end grain or all ply layers i think it was all i man it's been a minute since i've seen it but I, yeah i'm looking at the the face grain right here so it's got to be think it was. it's got to be edge grain all yeah, the way i think up. that added to I, I think i remember when we talked about it on the podcast commenting mm -hmm. on that as well so good job johnny builds we'll talk about you again in a few minutes probably so this is one of those funky projects that totally is functional, but is just way kind of in left field and mixed a little bit of materials. It, you know what it is? It, it's sort of like a hodgepodge project where it has a lot of interesting connections of dissimilar pieces, mm -hmm. but it's really, really clean. Normally when you see sort of a, a project where there's a lot of different things assembled together, it's supposed to look really steampunky kind of. Not it that kinda, sleep. Right, and not to knock uh, right. the guitar that Keith Decent built, but there's kind of that aesthetic to it where everything kind of is rustic and blends together. And But then this one is the kind of antithesis where it's like everything is sharp and, and really polished and really clean. So it's, it, it's encouraging to me because I normally think of those things as being binary choices. You right. either go with the sort of like messy, steampunky kind of industrial look where you're throwing a lot of things on and then we're, it, we're kind of like the reclaimed look. Yeah. This is bringing a lot of elements together in a really relatively small project in a really clean, precise way. And I think that's impressive. The one thing I would love to see on this project is LEDs running through the neck of the table that mm. I'm pointing at right here. Look at that. Mm. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I think it would be a really cool kind of end table with like a little bit of like a really neat kind of accent lamp for the room as well. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, one of the things that actually stands out to me about it, so if you've... 
if you go into this project and you think, okay, there's gonna be a hundred other ones, right? And people are gonna scroll through this feed and look at them. He probably used a really small amount of a sheet of plywood. Right. I think even just doing that by itself is gonna make you stand out from a group where everybody tried to use as much of the plywood as they can because yeah. your project's just gonna look a lot like lighter and more minimal than everybody else's most likely. Totally, great project, uh, really interesting take on the challenge for sure. Hey, Johnny Bell's in there. look at that. We put these in random order, by the way, so you cannot tell what's good or bad based on, well, they're all Exactly, bad, yeah, this there, is but, all no particular order. But this one he came out with really late in the, comp or not competition, challenge. Right. He kind of bumpered, you yeah. know, first Book projects and one of the kind of, kind of final week or two of projects as well. So this is a cool take on kind of the pixelation idea that yeah. kind of plywood lends itself to as well. And it kind of looks cahoots. like everything is like fingers being kind of pulled apart. Uh -huh. um, a really cool project. I think a good use of power carving, which we're seeing a lot. Yeah. Um, because one, stupid cheap tool, but just a lot of fun to be able to mess around with and get out of the routine of building just square angular things. Yeah, and a really good way to use it to kind of juxtapose the really like dangerous looking interior parts with a nice smooth rounded baby safe exterior yeah. the one thing i think i would like to see on this is the radius smoothed out maybe a little bit more i don't know if that would take more belt sanding or more random orbit sanding but whatever it is i think getting that kind of polished up a little bit more i think this is one place where a higher gloss finish would really kind of lend itself mm. to making it kind of really pop um and then maybe a little corner rounding on the tabletop i think would help bring everything kind of into a little bit more cohesiveness. Gotcha. Yeah, I, th I think it's an outstanding project. The For me, it's like the, and, and this might be a bit of nitpicking, but uh, when normally whenever I see a project that has sort of like a glass top on it, I always like tend to sort of wonder how those things could be sort of more integrated to it. So I almost wonder to see if, you know, uh, and I'm not sure if that's glass or acrylic. Acrylic. It's acrylic. But I would like to see the acrylic sort of sliced into the same dimensions as the wood and woven back into the top. So maybe mm -hmm. that, so it really does feel like that separated, yeah. uh, sort of, you know, ripped apart thing. When, rather than have that then, I think the, the acrylic so, strips and the wood strips is going to be married into it. Right. Uh, so instead of the tabletop setting on top of the base, it's all completely flush. integrated. So right. like so some there might of be the some surface stripes is of wood, wood some in of it. Too. Yeah. That would be really oh, interesting. Cool. Yeah. And from what we've seen with some of these projects that you can combine acrylic to wood seamlessly, yeah. like the case of, the, you see those like turned bases? Yep. Yes, and we'll be seeing them later. Awesome. Either Good way, job, Johnny, Johnny great project, and thank you for doubling down. You dropped a deuce, my man. <laughs> Trademark. Yes. Oh, yes, Sebastian. This, holy cow. Um, he made functional suit, he made functional luggage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With, like, he made the wheels and everything. So this one is a great like uh, farm to table build where it's just like totally custom and just. Uh, he didn't make the leather out of it, you know. No, I think he did. I think I remember okay. him cutting the leather off the cow. It was really graphic. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a. I think this one shows how those little touches can really make something look different. Like, even though it's predominantly plywood, especially in this shot, just seeing like the little buckles and the leather and everything, like it makes it look so much more like a finished professional piece yeah. than just seeing a hunk of plywood. And he chose the right places to do the DIY method. So in, like what you're saying, having the metal latches is something that people can kind of justify mentally and kind of understand whereas doing wooden wheels that's something where you're not really sacrificing anything from a functional standpoint but for the sake of the challenge you're getting a lot of visual impact yeah. mm -hmm. so great use of choosing where to go custom and where to go uh ready-made yeah it's a really it's a really exciting project and if it, it, it there's so many good techniques in there there's sort of curve cutting He's sort of doing like building his own hardware and wheels and stuff like that there's a lot of different technique in this one project Great work, good job. Yeah. All right, this one's pretty incredible. When I first saw it, I was just like, okay, cool. Uh, they did some sort of, you know, resin inlay, LED lights, an interesting shape. But the more, when I saw the video, I realized how much went into this project. It's yeah. pressure and it was, sensitive, and that's actually glass. They use like stained glass and cut it out individually and did this. It's a f fantastic video. It's incredibly informative, both on how they generated this sort of cellular geometry yeah. using like an online tool uh, to the actual making techniques and things like that. 
This project is outstanding. Uh, it is so well executed and incredibly well presented. Yeah. From a, a design point, the, 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 my only sort of, sort of bone to pick with it would be the, everything about it is this sort of cellular organic shape. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that's sort of in stark contrast to that is the sort of roundness of the perimeter. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and this is a bit of a subjective thing is that I, I would like to sort of see all that sort of, uh, sort of organic cellular nature not confined into sort of a more regular geometry. Um, I don't know, but, man. I'm not going to – I don't know. I have to see what you're thinking. But I, I really dig the shape of this because of how organic the base is. I think there needs to be something to kind of juxtapose it and kind of balance everything. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I think it would get kind of lost in the shuffle of like all of these lines. So I think having something clean that pretty much is a perimeter of like this is where these shapes can kind of naturally resolve mm – -hmm. Uh, I, I think it's a good way of doing that. But if you have a limited amount of time or are only going to watch a few videos, this is one of the ones I would highly recommend because you're going to learn a lot from it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think one other thing to think about is sometimes I like to just look at them as what would I think if I was just walking in a room and I saw this? Yeah. And I walk, if I walked in a room and saw this, it would definitely catch my attention in a good way mm -hmm. where it's going to, you're going to notice this thing. Like this is a... Really it ambitious. Feels like something out of Stranger and, Things. Yeah, yeah kind of, it does. It have, does. The uh, what's it called? The under no. The the, the, ups, the upside, upside down. down? The, the upside down. Side, upside I think it's upside down. Boy, we're big fans. Like full <laughs> It's the best best show out there. Right? Best Netflix show. <laughs> best Hulu show out there. Right? <laughs> Hands down. Yeah. But fantastic project. Uh, they have some other videos too, and they all seem to be like incredibly informative. So check out Way of Wood. Absolutely. Maddie Mallon. Or Maddie M. Allen, I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> Maddie M. Allen. Yeah. Could be. Exactly. We don't know. Maddie Michael Allen. There we go. This one falls into that same kind of category as the oh so DIY one, I think, where they're using the texture or the I keep saying texture. The plies to create some kind of It is of texture, it's pattern. visual texture, there just not physical High texture. High texture. Right. So the takeaway on this one I think is the fact that he used uh, stacked plywood. So that's a cool little callback to kinda of like what you guys have been experimenting with quite a bit um but it's really underplayed so you get to look at the top and then there's more to kind of digest and kind of see the more you look at it so from from the initial glance yeah it's a simple case and, and a cool textured top but there's a little bit more to it the more you kind of look at it and digest yep yeah, I think this is like a, it's sort of like the DIY version of the Oso oh DIY project, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because th this is like a very, this is like a good repeatable DIY project where you want to experiment with end grain. Maybe you're not as confident in your glue ups to have them be mm -hmm. your sort of end grain also be structural, which mm -hmm. I could see being a disaster if you don't quite get it perfect. Um, so this is like an excellent project where you're still using plywood as plywood to sort of build cabinet kind of structures, but you're still using it also as this sort of uh, uh, end grains to, to create sort of visual interest. Yep. Good job, Maddie Mallon or Maddie. Matthew Michael Mallon. We don't know. <laughs> the River Bowl. Yeah, I see. I'm not normally a huge fan of river tables or turning projects, but, but this one I had to include because this thing's nuts. It looks really nice. It's well photographed too. And the way that to go back to a point Ben was making about how incredibly structural a plywood could be when he was, you know, he wanted to break it apart to get that like kind of splintered edge. Yep. He was talking about like how he had to basically cut all the way through it except for the very last bit. To get that splintered look and man when i saw him making this thing like i was is this gonna come out is it gonna yeah. come out when you're watching him make it but it came out so awesome looking seeing this makes me think that a lot of people are doing resin river tables are pouring the resin too thin right mm. um or too thick right like the this resin seems incredibly alive because so much light's coming through it so this is probably, if you poured this thick, it would be a really strong blue. Yeah. But because it's sort of turned and carved out to looks like about a quarter of an inch thick, it almost looks like sea glass and has like a totally different transparency. Um, and it makes it a little bit more three-dimensional and I think a little bit less plasticky looking. Yeah, and he spent a long time in the way that he did it where he did it, I can't remember exactly, but it's like the bottom layer had a higher concentration of blue and then it was in like five stages less and less and less to where it was almost transparent at the top to kind of mimic, I guess, like an ocean profile view where it would get lighter as it came up. Totally. Yeah, it makes me wonder if there's a way to kind of 
to get more life out of that, those sort of like epoxy or resin uh, uh, parts of like a table inlay is doing some sort of clear thing on the underside that makes it a little bit thinner in some places. Yeah. So one, you're saving less money and it's not so much of a uniform slab of, of resin. Uh, it might be a little bit varied on the underside, but perfectly flat on the top. So different amounts of light are going through and you're getting a little more visual interest. Yeah, I haven't think, seen the video for this. Is there a video? Yeah, he did a video. Awesome. So he okay. shows he like creates the whole box. And yeah, it's a good video. Um, he goes over it in a lot of detail. And I think actually one of the interesting reasons th this is automatically interesting is just because every river table or epoxy pour that you see, you're used to looking at predominantly the top surface right. is what you see. Whereas this, you're seeing like a, a profile of what, like as if it was like a segment of the earth or whatever that you're seeing. This is this bottom part here is from 10,000 BC, and then all the way up to last Thursday. And it, this is a good good use of using a high gloss finish when applicable. When yeah. applicable. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Good stuff. This is another another good strong piece here. So <laughs> this is one of the first projects that I saw actually on the yeah thing. yeah it was like, pretty early. He, that we he did it uh, very early on. I love this project, and I think it has sort of a little bit of everything in it mm -hmm. right it's plywood used as plywood used to you know very efficiently to make a both a cabinet used as a surface used structurally to make the legs and it uses the end grain and not the end grain in just a, a normal way uh it's got a slight angle to it which i think is really cool mm -hmm. so that uh, the clicks the the angle of the uh of of the speaker sort of cabinet front is a little bit different than the vertical sides of the, the pieces. So it doesn't yeah. look like it's yeah. just blended in. There's a lot of little details like that that I think are incredibly smart. Also as an overall piece of furniture, I love this design. Totally. Because s speakers are getting more discreet and smaller, mm -hmm. um, but they're still not nothing. They're still about, you know, what, like the size of a shoe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so building them into a really small, minimal side table is pretty clever. Yeah, because every other component in a media cabinet keeps getting smaller and smaller, so it's not like there's a necessity for all this space. You know, if you gotta fit a game console, an Apple TV, and a couple other things, like, you've still got plenty of room, so you might as well just have some kind of built-in usage out of that. The one big kind of thing that I would like to see on this project is the top cabinet has so much of the edge layer of the plywood kind of being, you know, just predominant. Where when you look at the base square on, you know, it's yeah. all the face grain. Granted, you know, if you were to take a three-quarter shot where you're able to see that edge, everything would play together really nicely. But for this square shot, um, I, think, I think something where I could see a little bit of edge grain would be really, really interesting. See, I took that more as like, it, I thought of this as like a robot. Uh -huh. uh, and that's just like the face and like the body is like a different thing, right? Okay. Like, and if you look at like a lot of his projects, uh, they have that kind of difference. Like he's almost treating them as like, there's this, I mean, I get what you're saying, but yeah. like, there's this sort of like speaker pod. So I almost see this design as like two parts that are supposed to be kind of different. But I think that the, the alternative that I think would address the same thing that you're bringing up might be insetting the legs a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? So I think the more you bring those legs out to the surface of the front, the more you want to see continuity between them. Whereas yeah. when there's when there's a more, if they're maybe even angled at a, at a different way too, so the shadow line's a little bit uneven across them, uh, I think that would also say, okay, you'd be like, oh, it's intentional that this part's different from this part. But I also think what you're saying is another way to do it too. I think one thing you could, screen. right, and on that idea, maybe the, the stretcher between the two legs, I think that might be an opportunity to maybe carry on that same pattern and yeah. have a V kind of intersecting towards the center. I think that could be a great way of tying everything into one unit. A yeah. couple things. So if I look at it as a robot face, I see the legs as like a Fu Manchu mustache that it's got going on. Oh, but, okay. Mike, I kind of had the same thought of, as you. And again, we're being nitpicky here. It's like, you know, the top part is an a plus and the base is a B plus. You yeah, know, we're not saying yeah. this is a crap base or anything. No, yet. this is a very amazing project. But yeah, I could definitely that that I got that same feeling of like it kind of feels like two separe pieces. What about I'm just having this thought right now. I'm speaking out loud. What if it was you're to speaking go back to out my, loud or you're thinking out loud? Both. It got it. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna think out loud but speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to take a page out of my own book, the one-legged table. What if you did some kind of like thick post that came down that showed off, or not thick, but medium-ish mm -hmm. post that came down and then had like a flat part on the ground for balancing. Mm -hmm. But again, you could run some wires down and you'd be able to put a little bit of that like visual interest, like, you know, maybe having them 
where it's like two pieces that make a V kind of pattern or something coming down. I don't know. I'd have to put totally. it. Is there a video for this one? Uh, uh, yes, there is. Right. Um, Do another take where we say no, there yeah. isn't. <laughs> yes, there, yes, there is a video. And the last kind of takeaway I want to talk about is the close up on the speaker cones itself. That, that chamfer around yeah. the cones, really I think, nice. is just like an amazing detail. So beautiful. And just a good way of kind of doing just like that small touch that gives a ton of value. So basically what we're saying is good trouble, but the bass could use some work. Whoa. Get out of here. All right. No, we're done. <laughs> Tiny wood shop. So this one is just a really kind of simple project. I know it's not going to kind of... Oh, just, you're hey. breaking into Pop-Tarts <laughs> right into the microphone too. The segment, this tiny wood shop sponsored by Pop-Tarts. This is a nice ASMR moment. It's a simple project, but I think it's a good illustration of kind of the levels that people kind of come in at, at, at a mm -hmm. project. Some people come in with insane amounts of kind of technical proficiency, like Oso DIY. He knows he's going to get these insane glue ups with no gaps, and he's going to use that to his advantage. Whereas this one is kind of the design and the form of the project is where the confidence is coming from. And kind of building to fit that and knowing what you're good at, I think is a great, great skill to have. Yeah, and I think even beyond that, like just showing that you don't have to go nuts with something to come out with a good result. Like there's plenty of people that are either just getting into building or maybe are mediumly experienced. That's not a word, but mediumly. Have, mediumly Intermediate level. There you go. Pro amateur. Right. Uh, level that would be happy to have something like this in their house. And this is the type of like functional piece that people build. Yeah. I think the big takeaway here is that little handle. I think the wooden handle is a great way of tying everything yeah. together. And then a little bit of accent color goes such a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a great project. Very repeatable. Uh, and it's just like this is the sort of the meat and potatoes DIY plywood projects that we'd expect where you could make furniture pieces that fit pretty much any room size yeah. or, or configuration. And I gotta highlight another chamfer around the case here. Oh, it's yeah, it's knowing the small things that you can do to elevate your project is really great. You gotta not do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Or just looking out for your health here, Ben. <laughs> no. Pop the audio. kill you. Here, just get rid of the foil. Okay. All right. Another chair. Who wants to start? Because I'll I feel start. like we've all got plenty to say on this one. I'll this start. is a killer project. Yeah, and we talked about this one a little bit. Project. It's not oh, a yeah. project. Project. It's a killer project, <laughs> as they say in the uh, Great North. But <laughs> The okay North. <laughs> the mediumly North. Um, no, this was a super just like high-end looking piece. Like there's nothing about this that says plywood from this shot that we're looking at if you got up close to it it would start to say plywood but it just looks like a really elegant high-end chair absolutely it's a classic shape but he's done enough small things to make it completely unique um i like like kind of what you were saying this is a recognizable form and, and mm -hmm. it's really impressive but the fact that he was able to make it very sharp everywhere has got kind of I said it during the live stream. It's like everywhere has a stake that you could stab a vampire with if you need to. Every you know, corner's dangerous. Right. The taper on the back kind of tapers down really, really light, which kind of gives everything a really cool kind of modern twist. The the, the point at the armrests kind of make me scared to sit back too aggressively. But Don't still. trip while you're walking towards it. <laughs> exactly. But it looks really comfortable, really clean, and it's just a really good twist on, on a classic shape. It's also one of the ones where it actually uses Baltic birch in an essential kind of way, right? Where mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times the Baltic birch is selected because it has the, a certain aesthetic to the end grain. Yep. This one's done where it really needs that extra structural performance because the structural members are quite thin. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> um, so I really like that. It's, it's, it also makes it very efficient, right? So if you're gonna use a plywood product that's about twice the price of normal plywood if not more it might be a little bit more than that yeah use it in this kind of way where you're actually using less of it right yeah. so he's got this whole chair and i think he only used like half or less a sheet of the plywood because he's using the stronger stuff he's using it more minimally mm -hmm. so in addition to it just looking great and being a nice design uh that sort of efficiency of the material use i find very intriguing is if you're going to use the more expensive product get more out of it yeah so you're using actually less of it and make it comparable to using cheaper plywood where you have to build up more layers it's big good point. and great transitions between all of those radiuses where you have the joints he did a good job of getting a file or a rasp in there and making sure everything was just like a good seamless joint 
And uh, great work, good job, Chris with a K. Chris right. yeah. Just just because you use plywood doesn't mean everything has to be flat. Exactly. Yeah. Great work. Good job, you hoser. Nice pose, Jack. <laughs> This was a really interesting project. I remember seeing this one early. I think the thing that stood out for me about this project, we're back to saying project. Okay. <laughs> we're there again. Is how it's transitional, but doesn't look like it's uh, compromising. Yeah. Like it yeah. looks good in all of its different iterations. Now, are these hinges or are these brackets on the corners? I think they're hinges. So uh, this is the only picture that I've seen of this project. I don't know if it's something that I've missed or, or not, but whenever I was submitting this project kind of as our top ones, I, I love the shape of it and that everything is cut out of one single piece on the, the structure of the interior. So he was able to, or he or she was able to make this shape, but not really join much. So right. that's the beauty of this plywood is you have such a big flat surface that you can reference without any kind of angle figuring out. You can just know the shape you want and, mm -hmm. and cut it. You don't have to do all of this kind of complex geometry. The way I saw this project is that they're using plywood as a material to explore a design idea. Right. Almost more than as a way to sort of make the perfect piece of furniture. Um, so I think some projects are focused more on trying to design a certain geometry, or in this case, a certain dual function, mm -hmm. a small table that could fold into a bigger coffee table and then go back really quickly. Yeah. So I think when that's the main idea, plywood as a, as a means to sort of rapidly prototype something is incredibly efficient. If you're going to, if you have an idea for, let's say, a, a just an incredibly complex table and you want to make the finished thing out of an expensive hardwood right. like walnut, it's a good idea to prototype it out of a cheaper material first, work out all the kinks and do that. And I like seeing plywood used as a way to sort of express sort of how a design would move and stuff like that. Now, given the sort of nature of the challenge, I think that same idea could be expressed without hardwood by sort of doing more of a butcher block top where the hinges are built into the top and maybe mm -hmm. it sort of folds out that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said though, I, I like seeing a material used for its affordability and its efficiency and as in this case as sort of like a rapid prototyping type uh, surface material. Yeah. Totally. I want to see more pictures on this one. Yeah. yeah. I've looked at them. It's uh, yeah, kind of what Ben was saying. It transitions out into a longer, right. lower table. But And actually, with a lot of the projects that are entered, they kind of fall into categories of like highlighting the plywood, something that's more of like an engineering feat, mm -hmm. or and this this one kind of falls into that category, but I think it doesn't stray too far into it, where it still keeps an emphasis on the aesthetic and, and right. getting a good look at yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think it's so much an engineering feat as it is a feat of functionality, mm -hmm. right? You're able to have this collapsible table when you need it to be collapsed, but you know the times that you do want it to expand, he's, he, he or she, once again, has found like a really reasonable way of doing that, to yeah. where you're not making some kind of insane, complicated project. It's more just like very well thought through and has a very clean form yep okay now actually this one falls into almost exactly what i was talking about of being like a more of an engineering exploring an idea yeah. type of project and from that perspective it's extremely impressive maybe the most impressive thing that someone did in in the challenge um but it's like very heavily in that camp for me of being like can i pull this off and yeah. it's amazing actually how he shows in the video how simple it is. He made like a prototype with cardboard and tape. Yep. And it's basically just like, you know, strategically placing hinges makes the whole thing work. So it's, And totally basic hinges too, just yeah. like off the shelf stuff. Yeah, so it's pretty amazing from that point of view of like, wow, what could I do with it? Like, I almost want to see where this goes for him. Like this right. was like a, a first step into some direction that's just going to be something that's jaw dropping in a year from now. Yeah, it's 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 fantastic uh it was one of, i think it was like the second or third project i saw and i was just like wait you can do that like yeah. <laughs> it's, and, and that that simply yeah. yeah and i think we were talking about it earlier is having one of those projects that's kind of like a trend setter for the challenge he was able to release this really early and it kind of raised the bar really rapidly saying like if you're going to go for this kind of like left turn idea make it a good one because we've already heat. gotten this one exactly so Great job, Baloney Snickeri. <laughs> Not Balakna, Baloney. I think we and it emphasizing the international appeal of this challenge. We have people from literally all over the world. Absolutely. America, Canada, uh, Escondido. <laughs> the, great, the Great West, <laughs> if you will. 
So this one is a Nelson style bench and the form of it is kind of nothing insanely revolutionary because it's a, it's a common form. But what, what, what is really kind of revolutionary and cool about it is the way it was put together and the way it was built. And if you like Zen gardens and running water, be sure to check out this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he did a great job of the video too. It was a good example of kind of explaining everything, but showing how everything rather than relying on kind of half lap or any kind of dado joint to set everything in place it was more careful measurement and planning that made everything line up so so nicely you know it's funny we always talk about when you're doing your finished shot don't take it on your bench up or whatever right this one actually works yeah it's dramatic this it's is dramatic like, this is like the best picture of a project on top of a bench top i've ever seen now i will say he didn't make the dowels so Ew, yeah no <laughs> Not hardcore. No, it's, it's, it's a really, really great project. Yeah. Right. Okay. I threw this one in here. I like it. Yes. This one reminded me of Inception. So I only, yep. I only put one, but he's got another one on the other end that's basically a mirror of this. And then one in the center that has just, I don't know, it reminded me of like an upside down city sk skyline or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought it was just like a really cool floating shelf idea. Um, pretty restrained, but still very impactful visually. I think... A lot of times when uh, when people make floating shelves, it's like there's almost a race to make it be the least amount of material. Like mm -hmm. we're racing down to where there's just like a thin thing coming out of your wall and nothing else. But this one, you know, adds heft or some chunkiness to it that is there for looks and it actually works and, and makes it look like a cooler project. Yeah, I love that there's like this macro texture of the cityscape beneath, but even within that, the plywood really lends itself to even like more detail and, and kind of like a, I guess that would be a micro texture. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very visually distinct project. And what I like about this is people often, one of people's favorite critiques of DIY or people making things is, why don't you just buy something, man? Oh, I can just buy that for better. Yep. <laughs> something like this, you can't, right? Where it's, it's not a big thing that's, Certainly not a fast project because there's a lot of little pieces and glue ups and things like that, and you mm -hmm. have to have all those little glue joints clean so yeah. it doesn't see a bunch of like you know coagulated glue in between them. Yeah. But just stalactites coming. But down. it's something where you say even if you don't have like a huge house, let's say you have a small you know uh, uh, urban apartment, something like this is the thing that someone's going to remember. It's it's it elevates the books <laughs> into like a, a piece of wall art. Yeah. Um, also, great selection of books. Uh, I have a few of those. Um, so I think this this project it shows the usefulness of making a few distinct accent pieces for your home. Not a lot of material, but for how much sort of visual value and uniqueness it provides, it's an incredibly effective project. And this is exactly why it's worthwhile not building all the stuff you own, but building a couple of unique pieces. Yeah, and um, when you first said great selection of books, I thought you were going to say that your book was on there no. or something. <laughs> that would have made it an exquisite collection of books. This one I threw in here. Now I'm gonna, straight off the bat, I'm gonna say I'm not a huge fan of the look of the top, but from a process way, I thought this one was super intriguing. I so agree. it's kerf cut, but then making a cone by kerf cutting. Did you see how he glued it all up like, yeah. in a five gallon bucket? Yeah, because he was saying like how much pressure, like I think, I don't know, maybe he thought like it would be easier to just like, oh, I can muscle it in or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, he had to actually like clamp it down into a bucket and then clamp around it. and like calculate each curve is coming at like a slightly different angle to get that. So I thought this one was really cool from a process point yeah. of view and thinking like, Oh man, what kind of, this could make some really crazy shapes possible on a DIY budget. Right. And I think the big takeaway is yeah, the technical proficiency is great and, and the layout of everything was really impressive, but there were like a couple of takeaways even beyond that, that I think are really nice. Instead of just having straight vertical grain or horizontal grain, he put it on that angle so that whenever yeah. it does kind of play off of itself, not only is it working towards the V, you know, physically, but even the grain is right. working itself into that same kind of That's junction. That's like a tornado point. swirl of grain. Exactly. Uh, but like you were saying, Chris, I think the where we were talking about, you know, having a balance, like tons of emphasis on the top or the bottom, I think the, I think the top could use a little bit more, I don't know what it is, maybe showing a little bit of layers of plywood, maybe it's... Um, kind of a chamfer to the edge to kind of match the rest of the shape. Um, I think there's like a little bit that could go on there, but... Yeah, like I think even if it was just, if you were to put it like a chamfer on it to hide the end grain or the plies and yeah. then put a piece that was just recessed into it. So it was just like a flat 
Yeah, like but even I, that I think would I think a little bit more attention to the base or to the tabletop itself would be great. But all in all, this is an incredibly impressive project. Yeah, it is. really great. Work. Yeah, the video is really informative. Absolutely. Yeah. So Sean Boyd made this project, and this project rocks. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put a laugh track there because I don't think we got the reaction we wanted to. I think we did. We got oh, okay. the sigh from Ben that we were going for. <laughs> no, so I think this is the only rocking chair that this project or this challenge produced. But I was expecting a few. I'm not gonna lie. Um, having that kind of four foot by eight foot parameter kind of lends itself to that as, as an easy, to me, it was like the easy route for a chair. It's like, yes, yeah. rocking chair. Um, and as we got a couple weeks into the project or into the challenge, I was a little disappointed not seeing it, but I'm really glad that Sean Boyd made, made this. this. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it is uh, a really well executed shape. Um, if you look at it from the face, you get to see all of that plywood. Um, and it just it, it highlights the material. It's an efficient use of the material, and regardless of the challenge, it's a great shape. And he's from my hometown, Slovang. Slovang. Oh, it's right here. It's like three miles from it. <laughs> Slovang. <laughs> That's awesome. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, Sean Boyd. He always makes awesome stuff. That's no secret. The whole world knows it. But <laughs> yeah, this is just like another really good project. Um, I think it was for this one too that he talks about how he makes templates, which right. was like an ancillary video, which was also super informative. So you should definitely be watching his stuff. Um, yeah, it's just like a, a great product that doesn't hide the fact that it's plywood, but doesn't necessarily show it off either. But it looks really comfortable either way, as well. It's you a can very... even see like the lumbar support for the lower back there. It's not just like one continuous swoop. It looks like there was really a lot of thought kind of. This guy knows his it's, a, it's a very repeatable design. Like right. it, he's creating, and this is one of the things I was hoping would happen from this competition or this challenge is we're we're not just sort of exchanging ideas. We're actually creating sort of templates and things that people can repeat and make, and we're sharing design ideas all over. And this one's completely ready to go. Yep. Yep. And once again, this project rocks. More turned stuff. So this is one of the ones that intrigued me the minute I saw the photo. I was like. I love the color contrast. I liked how he sort of didn't just sort of stack them at even increments. He sort of varied mm -hmm. in these sort of colorful stripes into the already sort of nice pat, consistent pattern of uh, of you know birch veneer uh, uh, plywood. I had no idea what that those colors were, and I was sort of you know I, I was very curious. And it turns out it's acrylic. And he okay, made is that a, what it, I saw him right then. It was like I keep wanting to say parsecs, but I know that's not right. It was some weird. So right. Start with it a, a, it's, it's, a, a, it's a specific like acrylic product. Right. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. okay. And it's fantastic. And he shows exactly how he sort of glued and connected the acrylic to the wood. Yeah. Um, and how he sort of you know did this all on the lathe. But to me, it was that one little extra thing added so much to what was already a really nice turned project. Right. right. You know, and I'll say, I'm I've never turned anything. I'm not like a huge fan of turned projects, but I think they actually look cooler out of plywood than out of hardwood. I'm not gonna lie, especially with these designs, it works out great. Whenever you include the colors, it makes it makes all of the lines of the plywood be incredibly cohesive with it. Yeah. Whereas if that was just all kind of like face grain and edge grain of just a hard wood, I think it would kind of get a little kind of kitschy almost. But uh -huh. with this, everything is playing together so well that it's a it makes it a really well thought out design. Well, you know what it is? It's almost like a way because furniture can be so unorganic, but uh -huh. turn things tend to always be organic. But this is kind of a way to make it unorganic looking. It looks more right. the way that like we're used to seeing furniture. So it's, I guess it's just because it's different. You're so used to seeing only organic it's like pottery looking. from the future. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's I like this right a lot. That beehive. And it had a really fun video to go along with it. Yes. <laughs> this thing is so extra. What's his name, Mike? <laughs> Gryro Train. <laughs> I have no clue. Griffin, Griffin Train. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so I know right now you're looking at the, the picture of it from the back, but we're going to pop up the video of it from the front because sure. this fabric is not from this planet. I don't know not what from this it is. I think it's like no. they skin like a Wookiee or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Maybe that's what that and beehive looking thing is. baby in it too. Yeah. So this is a definitely uh, a, a left field project, but executed incredibly well. Um, that incorporated LEDs, the off-the-wall fabric is really cool, but the orb is shaped so nicely. Mm -hmm. The base is really, really just like clean and looks incredibly nice that um, it's digestible, I think is the way to put it, right? Yeah. 
put it that way. No, what I was going to say is I think uh, I got a whole theory working now where that first uh, like bird feeder thing was made to trap something. Ooh. And then they caught it, skinned it, lined the <laughs> interior of this with it. It's, it's, it's a all pretty insane project. You, you just check this one out. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's a griffin. Maybe that's what the inside's made out of. Oh, okay. There we go. Or a train. This one, again, falls into that camp of like, you know, use, cutting up a bunch of small pieces to make the, uh, the pattern. Yeah. What stood, about, what stood out about this one for me is actually how he took a whole sheet and made something kind of smaller. And I think he even commented in the video, like how heavy this thing is. Right. Because he's almost like condensing all of that material. So yeah, I just thought it was like a cool looking little... This, this is, I think, where you sort of maximized end grain right. uh, yeah. and all these different things. It's a beautiful toolbox. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a fantastic project. Um, the, the, the one thing I think would have been interesting, too, is the, the little p drawer pull details. Mm -hmm. I think there could have been a way to sort of make the... Uh, and I only thought this after I saw this sort of Oso DIY project of how he sort of bullnose that. I think there could have been an interesting way that I'd like to see, not saying that that would be better, but uh, to sort of contour, have a curve into those sort Just of bowls that zigzag. way. Um, so it seemed a little bit less like uh, mm -hmm. layer, 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 which I think actually is the design intention. So I don't think that's a, the, a mistake at all. Um, but I think, you know, I like this project so much, I'd want to see almost like a few other sort of versions of it. Yeah, he fully committed to texture, which is great because that's what this challenge is, but he used it uh, in, in a reserved way. So the herringbone is the standout texture. The herringbone in the lid is different than the, the pattern on the sides, and I think that's where everything kind of becomes cohesive and right. not too over the top. It's not so busy that you get lost in all these patterns. You can still digest it, understand how everything is supposed to function visually before mm -hmm. you really even have to like touch it's, it and grab it. You know one, where the handle is. It's one of the nicest wooden toolboxes I've seen. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that he used this project to like learn a ton about techniques like this and yeah. is probably gonna use it for other ideas now. Yeah. yeah, and if you haven't, go check out Michael Alm's Instagram feed. He does insane sculptures as well as uh, kind of more traditional woodworking as well. So good stuff. Okay, so this next one comes in from Ingstrom Design. And, and this is one you highlighted on the podcast. I did. I'd already talked about this one on the podcast. And it's pretty, you know, I think this was the obvious connection everyone was going to make. You're going to build a rocket lamp. It's, just, <laughs> it's a go-to project, right? Right. First, no, but that was first idea for everybody. The thing that stood out to me about this is it's one of those things that if you, if you just heard about it, like, hey, oh yeah, I have this lamp in my in my living room that's shaped like a rocket ship from the 50s, you'd be like, that's going to look terrible and tacky. But he actually like, <laughs> made it upscale and nice looking. It weirdly looks like a Louis Vuitton rocket. Yeah, yeah the way it has like, that texture on the, on the uh, lampshade. So yeah, I think you know, that's, that's the thing that stood out to me about it, and that's why I chose it, is I just thought it was like a, a whimsical, goofy idea that's actually executed really well. It emphasized that plywood is such a great blank canvas. You can really start with it and develop everything from the end grain to just really cool sort of almost clip art type shapes in three dimensions. Yep. Yeah, big fan, great project. Good stuff. Okay, Brothers Maze. I threw this one in there because I thought it was so functional and I actually am like, oh man, I want that. Like, <laughs> I'm always, you know, I'm always sitting on my couch with my laptop just on my lap. But, and I've seen lots of people make these types of things and I thought this looks like one of the better ones that I've ever seen. Um, Looks big and chunky, like you know, you're not gonna accidentally knock it over. But it's not top heavy. It's got a good taper as the kind of leg a, goes up. Yeah, and a nice thick base on it, and the way it's got like the little cutout looks nice. So it's it's got like a lot of angles and and uh, arcs and everything going on. So yeah, it's a very repeatable project, and at the same time, you can imagine it being adapted to fit all sorts of different easy chairs or sofas. Totally. Yeah, in a way, and just like if you think about the technique that made it up, so it's like okay, I'm gonna cut out one shape that's like the basic shape of whatever it is that I'm trying to make and then just like alter it by power carving or doing whatever to kind of refine that shape as I go to, to get down to the exact final shape. Totally. So you can make like all kinds of stuff using this technique. All right. This one by Imagine and Make It is, dare I say, adorable. You dare say. <laughs> um, I like this. It's like, a, it's a pretty simple, straightforward project. And, uh, you know, I, I'm curious to see if those were all 
cut as complete loops or whether they cut a bunch of L's or whether mm. they cut small corner pieces and then laminated in the straight pieces. Is there a video for this one? I don't know, yeah. but if it is a bunch of squares all cut out of the plywood, I would be surprised because they would have had to really squeeze yeah. those in there because yeah. they're the exact size. Yeah. But it's just really clean. I like the contrast between the dark. It appears to be walnut with the sort of lighter plywood. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great looking clean project. And I also think you could take that, that basic little cabinet loop yeah. and you could put all different kinds of legs on it. You could even go no base, I think, and yeah. it would still look really cool. But <laughs> there's something about this one that completely reminds me of just like a little piggy bank, just like those little stubby legs. Not in a bad way. They look awesome. Uh, it kind of keeps the whole like mass and center of gravity low enough that it seems like stable to the eye. You're never worried about having to knock it over. Now, see, you see a pig. I see a turtle with his head retracted in the shell, and then you pull out that little drawer <laughs> and it comes out. But where's the tail? Well, on the back side, you can't see. Oh, you just it. can't see it. Always retracted. See, I, I almost feel like there's like a little bow tie down there for the legs. Oh, like it's like okay. a weird cyclops robot with. <laughs> I was gonna say to get off the uh, what animal this looks like tangent. It actually is. I think something to take away from this is how little, how what a small amount of that like extra higher end material can be used to make the whole thing look higher mm. end. Yeah, like it's a very small amount of wall yeah. or whatever that is, and it. Weirdly really enough, I, off. yeah, I didn't even think of the fact that he put walnut in there at first. It's like a very clean blend. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even brought it up. That's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. So you know what time it is, guys. It's time, it's time to debate. Yes. We've got to figure out who's going to win this thing. Yeah. So I guess uh, let's well, kick. Yeah, okay. Before we say who the winners are. Uh-huh. Why don't you guys tell a little bit about what you were looking for in projects? Like, what, okay. for you guys, what, what sort of defined a successful entry to this challenge? Okay, so for me, I kind of <clears throat> broke up all of these projects kind of into subcategories because I think each one's, e each kind of project tend to kind of play to a specific kind of idea or kind of threshold. So I think there were a lot of projects that just were incredibly clean pieces of furniture that were designed really well and integrated the plywood with either patterns or really showed off the edge grain really well. But it was just kind of just like really well-made furniture pieces. Um, and I think that was kind of its own category that kind of left itself so to something like fine the, craftsmanship. Like the project that uh, Mortgage and Meyer did. Uh, well, in a way, almost. But I feel like that kind of falls into its own category. Uh, Remaking kind of, the piece, kind of? So the one that I kind of picture is this, this most recent one we just highlighted did a great job of showing the plywood in furniture um, without kind of it did add a little bit of extra material, but that wasn't the focus. Another one might have been like Oso DIY. He did a great job of making a really clean plat pattern and building a really fine piece of furniture with it. Then you had the people like Mortgage and Miter that kind of decided, let me take uh, this plywood, let me do something that's kind of classic, but throw a twist on it. So that kind of form is recognizable, similar to kind of the Sam Lee. He would had a really unique kind of recognize. It was unique, but recognizable form. So he was able to kind of twist it that way. And then lastly, I think you just had those people that were just kind of coming out of left field. You've got people building sharks out of plywood. You've got people that are building plywood out of broken skateboards. Mm -hmm. uh, people that are able to uh, even incorporate like outside units into their into their projects, like Eric, uh, who <clears throat> like Eric, who was able to make this kind of media console with bookshelf speakers. Uh, kind of similar to Chris from Mortgage and, Mortgage and Miter, he was able to incorporate an outside element without that being the focus. And I think that's important because that shows uh, kind of freedom with the rules. Like what we were saying is like, if you have a creative idea, run with it. Um, don't limit yourself if you have the idea, uh, if you have the idea. And so they were able to do that without it being the main focus. Uh, the, the console Eric built, it was a beautiful piece of furniture and you don't really pay attention to the fact that the speakers are there until you look at it for the second or third time. Chris, right. what was sort of important to you? Yeah, so I think Mike kind of covered pretty much everything that I was gonna say right now. He Sorry. He did a good job, so I'm not <laughs> gonna say all that again, so I'll keep mine very short, but um, it's kind of subjective, but what I was looking for somebody who just embodied what the whole challenge was about, and yeah. I know that can be different to different people. Okay, and so like something. for you, what was, what was it? So for me, it was, you know, obviously, I, I think the things that I was more drawn to highlighted the plywood. Okay. So um, 
And I think that's because normally a lot of times plywood is something that gets covered up. I think that's... An edge banded. And yeah, yeah, it started to change a lot. Yeah. But So I think that was probably the things that I gravitated most towards. Just like... Big time. They took something that was plywood. They made the fact that it is plywood almost like a benefit. Or, you know, it looks like there's extra design put in there that would not have been in there otherwise. Um, so those were the things that I was kind of drawn to. And something that I had mentioned on the podcast before and... Like I said, so I'm looking for things that embody what the challenge is to me. That could be something different to everybody. There were so many good projects that were entered into this. I really feel like if you ask 50 different people what their favorite project was, you're going to get like, you know, 35 different answers. Yeah. So it's really hard to boil it down into three people that are going to be selected as the winners. I think there's a lot more winners than just that, but got to do what you got to do, right? All right. For me, I thought more of different criteria or different aspects of, of, of the process that would make a project successful. So I think the first sort of category I thought about was sort of expression of the material. How are they sort of not just making something out of plywood because it's the material that's there that's ready to use, but actually using the, the characteristics of the plywood to create a unique sort of visual expression. The, the other thing I thought was sort of inventiveness of the process. Yeah. Like how do you actually create what you're doing? Because I want a way to just not just, you know, reward the craziest CNC project that might come right. out, right? I want to think, how, how was the way you made it as clever as the thing that ended up resulting? Yeah. And then the other criteria that I thought about was uh, efficiency and repeatability. So I thought about efficiency both in terms of material usage and time. Now, efficiency was sort of interesting for me because it at, at times can be at, at odds with some of the expression of the material, right? So I love the, the end grain expression, like the toolbox or the Oso mm -hmm. DIY project where we made the table where it's all end grain. Yeah. I love that sort of creative, inventive expression of that that results in a really dramatic aesthetic texture. But it does compromise efficiency a little bit because a lot of material ends up from all those little pieces sawdust. In, into <laughs> sawdust, right? So I was trying to think of like, how do we sort of balance sort of efficient and also functionality from a time standpoint, that may be an efficient use of material that he used up all the material with no waste other than sawdust, but those are also very time consuming to cut something into a whole bunch of tiny pieces and then reassemble it, right? Yeah. So I want to be able to sort of value projects that were also time efficient, not just heroic feats of labor and craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. Because for me, that's where sort of the design is different from being a craftsman is that you want to think about how the sort of spreadability of a particular project. So. And nope. that kind of plays into the repeatability. I right. Too. And I think it, yeah. it also speaks to the, how you were sort of putting projects into different categories. I think each one of those categories prioritizes different things uh, 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 differently, mm -hmm. right? So functional furniture projects are going to focus more on sort of like that one little uh, cabinet we saw near the end with the little green sliding door at the wood pole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might not be the highest on the charts in terms of expression of the material, but very repeatable. And very efficient yeah. and a very useful piece of functional furniture. furniture. Yeah, I could see a lot more people building that than maybe the the Oso DIY project, which I actually think aesthetically is incredible and like one of the best. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't mean one's better, but I think there's these different ways of of looking at good things, uh, and there's a lot of good things in. Uh, or a lot of different ways to be good at this. Well, I think either way, we need to sit down, debate it for a minute. But regardless, I don't think we won. No, I don't. Th well, we won well, I think, by putting this challenge on. It's I amazing. Think, we had incredible, no. like incredible contestants. I think it's like, safe to say that none of our projects would have made the top ten, or maybe, right. maybe even not the top twenty. May uh, I don't know. I'm kidding. Yeah. I have myself <laughs> at a solid twenty-three. So, for example, I think uh, both of your guys' projects were great on repeatability, okay, uh, and efficiency. Right? They're they're both projects that are straightforward, functional pieces of furniture. Uh, there, there was little twists to them. Yeah, you sort of painted the legs and did some some cool little things. Also experimented with the CNC. Your project very repeatable, and it used half inch plywood. I think very effectively to try to get like a thinner edge, but still being able to build up layers. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so yeah, I like how yours kind of falls into that left field camp of like you know it's not doing anything crazy. The layers are there, but it's not any kind of like insane pattern that no one's ever seen before. But you had a cool kind of left turn, left right. field thought process of using the offcuts to make sure that 
you're able to get more life out of the material. So right. the, the actual plywood project is derivative of other things I've done. Stack right. plywood is power carp. That's nothing. That's nothing new. And mm -hmm. to be honest, like the the form's okay. That kind of hourglass thing, but uh, I think it could have used a little refinement. It's I a mean, cool twist on efficiency, though. The right? cleverness was using the waste thing as a mold for an entirely different material to make two similar pieces out of completely different things. So the sort right. of it was a neat observation on the negative space, but the, the execution I'd say is more like sort of B minus. Either way, it's amazing, amazing projects. Yes. Thank you a million to everybody that participated. We love you, but it's time. It's, it's time. It's time. It's time. Let's count down our top three. You guys ready? No, yeah, well, let's just, we've kind of already discussed it, right? And yeah. We've narrowed down. Actually, debate. first, you know what? Before we get into that, let's thank Rockler for sponsoring Absolutely. this whole thing. So they've, We'll say what the prizes are right now, and then we'll just say who the people are so we don't have to say the people on the prize. But they were generous enough to sponsor this whole thing, gave us some really good prizes to give away. So the person who gets third place is going to get the Rockler Material Mate panel part. Nice. The Ooh. person who wins second place is going to get the Rockler Miter Fold Dado Set. Man. I want one of those. I want one of those. Maybe you'll get number two. All right. Let's fingers see. crossed. We've already said you wouldn't, but... <laughs> and first place is just going to straight up get a $500 gift card to Rockler. Bang. So and get whatever they want. Sweet. All right. So number three, our winner is PC underscore makes with the insane plywood... Stand up paddleboard. Stand board. up paddleboard. So, so you know what, this no, one. Wait, wait, wait. Let's put it. We need to see a video of him standing up paddling. Right. We need to make sure it floats first, right? <laughs> no, it floats. He's <laughs> so make sure it's it does. It, it could does. be a charade. He's good at Photoshop. Right. So when we were talking, at least my idea of like these camps, you know, of where the project can lie into. This is one of those like left field, off the wall. You never could have expected someone to build this. Whenever we launched, you know, right. the ply. You know, when someone says, "All right, plywood challenge," what do you think people are gonna make? Stand up uh, paddleboard. Dining table, coffee table, blah, 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 blah. And naturally, paddleboard, right? Yeah. You're like, no one could have expected that. Um, he did a, a, an incredible job of, one, showing off all of the layers and uh, uh, doing just a really efficient use of the material to be able to stretch it that far is really impressive. Um, and then kind of the, the last third thing I want to highlight, I'll let you guys talk after that, is he incorporated a few like hardwood, I think, walnut strips yeah. into that. Which, once again, he had the design idea, we had the loose rolls that allowed him to kind of throw in this small kind of artistic touch that made it beautiful outside of the challenge too, to where it wasn't just yeah. plywood like overkill. No, I think you, you nailed the, the point that I wanted to make on the head where if somebody said, I need you to make a, a stand-up paddleboard out of plywood, people would do it, but then the fact that it's also aesthetically pleasing. Right. Like, there's also a lot going in there it's just like that extra stuff that really sets this project. It stands out. Like, this is a standout project. The only extra, extra step he could have done is to actually make a paddle, too. But he probably ran out of, he ran out of plywood. That's what I'm he sure. did first two by four. <laughs> we should have seen it coming. It's an excellent project. It, uh, it defies a lot of expectations, yeah. both in terms of the size of the finished piece relative to the size of plywood. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think the, the volume of that paddleboard might be greater than the, than <laughs> yeah, the sure. volume of a sheet of plywood, yeah. which is pretty pretty cool to think about. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's impressive. It also, you know, even if it was just a, like I've seen one sheet of plywood boats before, yeah, uh, which, are, which are awesome and efficient. <clears throat> but this kind of did both, right? It was both a watercraft and it sort of it expressed the sort of end grain almost as if it was like a piece of art. Like if this was just a, a piece of wall art, it would be pretty incredible. Or yeah. a giant sort of like light fixture or something like that. Yeah, it made me think how cool uh, like a strip canoe could be using the same kind of plywood layers. Yeah. Um, just seeing it cut so thin and being as pliable and like visually rewarding as it is, it was, it was really great. So thank you, PC underscore makes. Uh, go follow him on Instagram and check out his second project. And we want he did. He made two projects for the challenge. We want to see somebody on the paddleboard. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. We need to see someone fall off that thing. Get after it, Patrick. All right, number two. So number two is the incredible chair by Sammy uh, Chi on Instagram. Sammy underscore. Nope, Chi. just Sam. No, it's Sammy. Sammy? Yeah. Oh damn! I'm sorry. Sammy or Sam? Sammy underscore Chi Perfect. on Instagram. What I thought was really impressive about this project is when you first look at it, you're like, that would be so hard to make. 
Yeah. But the video kind of breaks it down and you realize this was a project where a lot of the work went into before any tool was, any power tool at least, was sort of picked up to make the first cut. Totally. And it shows the power of how by thinking a lot about a design and refining the design, you can get a lot of visual drama without that many sort of uh, actual instances of material manipulation. Yeah. Right? So that w when you look at the chair, you're like, how's that come together? And then he shows that little uh, foam core model in his Instagram video and how he does that double fold to make these like angled loops, which makes the seat and the back of the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that it's like you immediately recognize the chair is making, being made out of plywood. So it's a sort of expression of the plywood is the versatility of it as a planar surface that can mm -hmm. then be scored and curve cut into doing that. Uh, I give him high marks for the way he showed the process of how he makes it. Yeah. I learned a ton by watching the video. That masking tape idea killer. The masking tape trick. So I think this project was everything that we sort of hoped would come out of this competition. I think it so. It was inventive, uh, fantastic design really interesting sort of manipulation of material not just a single we saw a lot of kerf bends yeah this one showed it in two directions but one continuous piece um it was material efficient uh relatively time efficient he also didn't see and see this project yeah uh and i was sort of surprised i thought somebody with the sort of computer skills to sort of design that would probably go right to a cnc but he did a lot of uh used a router with a sort of a, a you know the sort of duplicating bit and stuff like that and made a lot of jigs to sort of cut his radiuses. So fantastic video. We can all learn something from, by, by watching it and just an incredible project by Sammy Chi. Awesome. And there is a video and it's linked. <clears throat> yes. All right. Number one, moment of truth. So we kind of talked about it a lot already and it's Oso DIY. Da, da, da. And I think that for me, if I could make it as simple of a statement as possible is why this is number one for me is that it takes, a, it's very restrained in the way that it's used, but it very much highlights the fact that it's made out of plywood. And it does it in a way where like this table out of hardwood would still be a nice table. I'd give it, you know, a seven out of 10. Out of plywood, I give it a 10 out of 10. And not because it's made out of plywood, but because the plywood actually makes it look cooler and it brings all that pattern into the way that the tabletop rounds over, how he yeah. carried it through to the legs. There were just like a lot of places where you could have taken a shortcut, but he was just like fully committed to building this thing up the way that he was going to build it up. The, yeah. And it came out just fantastic. Commitment is the, is the, the word that I sort of uh, thought about when I did it, is that we saw a lot of interesting expressions of end grain, but this one was, the, the idea is relatively simple, to make a table only showing end grain. Yeah, yeah. basically flipping what people there try is, to do with plywood. You can't really see any veneer, right? Right. And even down to sort of like the routing and stuff like that, the quality of the finish, uh, uh, it, it's an exceptional project. And so I think what, what I like about it as a winner is that it's not additive. He doesn't have a hundred ideas or innovative things he's trying to show. He's expressing one thing all the way. It's like mm -hmm. that, uh, what was it? I don't know if it was a Bruce Lee quote or not. He said, I don't. Don't fear the guy with 10,000 kicks. Fear the guy that has the one, one kick, kick practice 10,000 yeah. times. Yeah. This doesn't have 10,000 ideas in it. It has one idea, but it's pursued all the way. Left no stone unturned. Right. right. And I think that a lot of people actually did projects in this vein. And a lot of them were great. A lot of them were even in our top 40 countdown that we did. I just think this one expressed it the most right. cleanly of all of them. Right. It was kind of like what we were talking about as we were going through projects. Is you have the people that made an incredible pattern, but maybe that didn't flow into the base as elegantly as that one did or cohesively. And I mm -hmm. think he just like, it was everything, like what you guys were saying, if I can't think of anything that would improve it, you know, mm -hmm. I can't think of adding a round over that would make it look better because he did it. Mm -hmm. Flipping, even, even the way on the legs, instead of just having all the layers go the same direction, yeah, like the stretcher goes oh, yeah. a different direction, direction than the legs yeah. itself. So it's just like every possible kind of thought process, I think, went into it, and he made the right decision each time as well. Yeah. So yeah. that's really cool to hear. So I guess if there's nothing else to say about that one, these were our top three, this yeah. was our top 40, but there honestly were way more than 40 good projects in this yeah. thing. So if you haven't, like, check out that playlist. Throw it, you know, when you're 
eating your dinner or whatever, getting ready to go to bed, just throw it on shuffle, watch it through for the next couple of nights because you're going to stumble on some stuff that you probably will think is cooler than anything we even showed here. Yeah, and Check scroll out. through that Instagram yeah, hashtag exactly. too. Yeah. We had over a thousand posts to it, over 1,200 yeah. actually. So um, to everybody that participated, that's amazing. Yes. And for the next challenge, we got to work out a way to get like more things to more people. I yeah. Think. Uh, yeah, just to show, bigger. just a way to like physically show our appreciation, even though we're trying our best to do it now. Yeah. So this challenge is a lot of fun for us. Uh, we all learn a lot from it. We Absolutely. get a ton of inspirational ideas. It's also just a lot of fun from a sort of community building standpoint. Um, we'll definitely be doing more of these. We're trying not to do them too often because I know this is such a huge amount of time that yeah. people put into this. Yeah. But if you have ideas for the next challenge. Hit us up. Yeah, and if you did disagree with who you thought won, leave us some comments. Let's get some like upvotes and downvotes on like comments for like who who you guys thought should have won. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Keep it positive, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, don't, no bashing. Do not bash top three projects. If you do, it's getting deleted. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys, and thank you Rockler for sponsoring this. That's amazing. Uh, let's keep the community building going yep. with the next project. Sounds good. To be announced. Bye, everybody. See ya. Awesome. No. No, <laughs> <laughs>